Okay. Uh, right, there's a midterm tomorrow, but it is not in this room, so don't come to this room. It's in that room, uh, which is the Center for uh, Sustainable something, something, something sustainable. Um, Center for Interactive Research and, sustain and Sustainability. Okay, great. That's where it is. Um, it's kind of a modern looking building. Anyway, uh, so don't come here. Uh, there's another announcement which isn't on here, but but it's not really an announcement, but I'll tell you anyway. Programming assignment two is coming out very soon. Maybe even tonight. Maybe tomorrow. So anyway, it's coming. Um, and today's plan is to do uh, is to talk about binary search trees, to try to talk about uh, uh, find operation, insert operation, and the remove operation that we need in order to support uh, the dictionary abstract data type. That's what we're, our goal is for today. Uh, but before we get to that, we have to warm up with this great question, which is, um, you have two trees here. Are these binary search trees? So there's a tree on the left, and there's a tree on the right. And um, how many people think that the tree on the left is a binary search tree? How many people think the three on the right is a binary search tree? Great. Um, okay, let's fix it. So, yes, but no. So let's fix it. Let's. I mean, this is the one thing I see. There's like three children on a node. This is a binary search tree. Has to be a binary tree. Um, otherwise, it's not called a binary search tree. It's called an emery search tree or a other names for this, uh, like B trees or two, three trees or things that have variable numbers of children. This is not, we're talking, this is talking about binary search tree. So now, I've removed the third child. Now, is this tree a uh, binary search tree? Yes? No? No? Okay. All right, what else do I have to do? What else is a problem here? Fifteen is on the wrong side of eleven. Well, fifteen is larger than ten, so it's on the right side of ten. But actually, fifteen needs to be on the correct side of eleven, or else your search will not find fifteen. So this is a problem. The fact that 15 is in the left subtree would be valid if 15 was less than 11, but it is larger and therefore cannot be there. Okay, so we remove 15. Now is it a binary search tree? No. Yeah, there's this 21 here. 21 is larger than 20. It shouldn't be there. Um, you already found my 15 before you found the 21. But anyway, I'm still... Uh, do we fix everything? Is now is this a binary search tree if I remove 21, 15, and 7? No, yeah, we can go through and check, but I think it is. At least it's supposed to be. Everything in the left subtree of a node has key values that are smaller. Everything in the right has key values that are larger. And it's a binary tree. Pretty warmed up. You remember binary search trees? Good. Any question about this? Um, I feel like I wanted to tell you something more, but I can't remember what it was. Okay, never mind. Uh, so we want to find a node in this tree. In a binary search tree, like for example, this this tree. And we're going to be given a key value in order to find the associated data value. And I have a couple of questions for you. This, this, is, a, this is a fine code for doing that. Um, why is it called pfind? I'll tell you what the P stands for. It stands for private. Why would, why would this be a 
private or fine function. This is a fine function that we're supposed to be implementing for use as a dictionary. Why would this fine function not be something that I would want? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to reveal the implementation. And this this piece of code right here, it, it's full of implementation stuff. Like it's returning pointers to nodes. So even if even if nodes were something I wanted a user to know about, even if it was some structure that was okay for them to know about, I would not want to give them a pointer, maybe a reference to a pointer, in my structure because they could change it. They can use that pointer to manipulate the data structure outside of the class functions. So if I hand you back a pointer from an object, that's like saying, go ahead, destroy my object. So this, because it's returning pointers to, well, first of all, because it's referencing internal structures that the dictionary abstract data type doesn't need, so that's the first reason to make it private, so that the implementation uh, is not uh, part of the interface. The second reason is, even if it was part of the interface, we would not want to allow pointers to our structure to get out because they could be manipulated. Uh, prevent uh, manipulation of the structure by the user outside of the regular operations like insert, remove, and delete. So this is outside of the ADT. Um, so let's just take a look at, let's for, mo for the moment, let's forget about the fact that I'm passing uh, everything by reference. No, let's not forget about that for a moment. Let's think about that for a moment. Why am I passing the key by reference? Yeah, I mean, really, it's because I don't know how big keys are, and keys could be quite large objects, and I don't want to copy them when they're passed into this function. So this is this is a reference to uh, avoid a copy. Um, for the moment, let's not talk about why the other things are references. Let's just imagine that they're not. They're just regular old pointers. And let's see what this code does. So, uh, well, what does it do? It checks to see whether it's got a null root node, R, and if it does, it returns it. Okay, that's a little weird. Um, but I guess that's a good way to trigger it wasn't found. Uh, it tells the caller that if it returns null, it's not in the tree. Uh, then it gets to the point where it's comparing the key value of the root against the key value that we're looking for, and it's doing exactly what you know a binary search tree should do. If the key value you're looking for is smaller than the roots key, then you should go look for it in the left subtree. If it's larger than the roots key, then you should go and look for it in the right subtree. And if it's not smaller and not larger, then it's uh, found and you return. Is it good? Okay, this could not be simpler code, right? You could write this code um, fine code, you could write it iteratively, or you could write it recur I wrote it recursively because uh, I like recursion, but, but you could write it iteratively for sure. And what would be the advantages of writing it iteratively over writing it recursively? Advantages over iterative. Advantages of iterative over recursive. Name one. Easier on the library? Oh, easier on the memory. Uh, so I knew what you meant the first time, but then you clarified it in a way that got me confused. So now I'm confused. So I, let me just say what I think you said the first time, which is that there's memory issues. If I use recursion, there's memory issues, and where do those arise from? 
they use more memory than I do in an iterative solution. Where where is it being used? The call stack. The call stack's growing because I'm putting stuff onto the call stack, and maybe I can avoid doing that if I'm using an iterative solution. So space, memory space, memory. Maybe there's a little bit of speed as well because in an iterative, I don't have to do a function call, but function calls are pretty cheap. But maybe it's a little bit cheaper to do it. Um, okay, so then why would we do? Yeah. Uh, it is tail recursive. Meaning what? That's true. If I ran this with an optimization level larger than three, then it would definitely do tail recursion elimination. It would remove the sequence of call stacks that get put on top. So yeah, so dash 04, and you're all set to go. Dash 04 means the optimization level 4 on the compiler. So if you type G++ dash 04, it optimizes away lots of stuff that slows the thing down. What it might actually do is unroll your loops, so the code might get bigger, but the code will presumably get faster. Anyway, there are levels of optimization. Some of them are for speed, some of them are for size. If you do dash 02, it'll compress, try to make the smallest code possible. Anyway, you should type man, M-A-N, which is for the manual, G++ for the compiler. And then it will tell you all kinds of interesting things. Actually, it'll probably point you to a website now. That's what you can do. Okay. okay, anyway, that's a very good point. So really, there's no disadvantage to using recursion as long as you've got the optimizations click turned on. But in any case, what's the great thing about recursion? I mean, we looked at the advantages of iteration. What's so great about recursion? It's easy to read and write. Yeah, I mean, for this particular example, it's probably just as easy to read the iterative version as it is to read this version, except for one small thing, which is that the reason why I didn't write the iterative version is because I sat down to write the iterative version and I really wanted to pass these, I really wanted to pass this node uh, pointer by reference, and I really wanted to return a reference to a node pointer. And it turns out that if I tried to do that in an iterative solution, it got ugly very quickly. Ugly meaning that I had to use pointers to pointers. So instead of having reference references to pointers, I really need to meet them explicitly pointers to pointers. I had a pointer to a pointer to a node. And it was, it's ugly. But then that sort of makes you think, well, why in the world do I need to have references to pointers in this thing? Why in the world would I want that? What does this thing return? Let's think about that. Oh, before we think, you think about that while I ask you another question. Um, Runtime. How much time does this take? Yeah. Log in time. I see that I'm going to have to go through a little bit more training here. Is it really log in? How much time does this take? You're an optimistic person. You're believing that the tree is going to be somehow balanced and bushy and fat, you know, like a nice, short, squishy tree. But trees are not all like that. This tree could be very, very skinny and very, very tall. Everything could have gone into the left child, up the left child, up the left child, up the left child. It could basically have just a string. And what would be the time for performing an insertion in such a structure with n nodes? Theta then. So it's not log in. We can't claim that. But we can claim that the worst case running time is theta of n. In fact, we could be a little bit more precise if we wanted to and say if the key is in the tree, the running time is proportional to if the key is in the tree, the running time is proportional to the depth of the key. 
It's the depth of the key, because that's as far as I need to go until I hit that key. The number of comparisons I have to do involve all of the nodes that are on the path from the root down to the node that contains the key I'm looking for. So the amount of work that I do is proportional to the length of that plant path. When I get there, I stop. So you could say this is oops, you could say that this is theta of the depth of the key if the key is in the tree. And it's not exactly the depth of the key, technically speaking, because you have to add one. And why do you have to add one? Because the root is at depth zero, and theta of zero is not a good thing to talk about. So, yep. Ooh, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but it's a great question. What do you think the average case comes from? But if you assume it's balanced, then you're not talking about average case. I mean, you have to say to me, average case produces a balanced truth. So we'll talk about this in just, just a little bit. It's, it's a great question. What does average case be? OK, so now we talked about everything except for the thing that probably is the most mysterious. Why am I passing these things by reference? Why am I passing pointers and returning pointers by reference? And so the hint that I'm going to give you, the real answer is on the next slide. Uh, the, the hint that I'll give you to the answer, though, is that um, uh, if I return a pointer by reference, it's a return that is giving you access into the data structure. If I return just a pointer, it would be some number, and it would be a pointer. But I'm giving you the a reference to a pointer. So what this thing is going to do, for example, when it's looking for like number 7, is it'll compare against 10 and it'll go this way, because 7 is less than 10. And then it'll compare against 5 and it'll go this way, because 7 is bigger than 5. And it'll compare against 9 and go this way. And then it'll say 7 is right there. Now what will it return? It'll return a pointer to that node, but which pointer? This pointer right here. That's the pointer that it will return. And that's the hint that you have for why this might be useful. Yeah. Exactly right. That's exactly right. Is there any question about this though before we flip the page and see that that's exactly what we're going to do? Shouldn't you set the parameter to be constant because you don't, even though I'm giving you the reference to it, I don't want you to mess around with it. But I do want to mess around with it. That's the nasty, horrible part. That's the, the secret, is that I'm actually going to mess with it. But I can just find it. Because the first thing that insert does is going to find. And then I'm going to use the fact that I have a reference to allow me to update the actual pointer in the tree to insert the new node into the tree. So let's, let's, is it okay? Should we talk about this? Or does anybody have any other questions about the, about um, fine? No. Uh, I'm passing everything by reference so that I have a handle on a particular pointer in the structure. And by having that handle, having it's called a handle because it allows me to manipulate it, but it really is it's really a reference to that. And technically speaking, that's sort of like a a lame version of a pointer to it. So it's sort of like a pointer to a pointer. And because I have that in my hand, because I have it. I can access that pointer inside the data structure and I can change it, I can manipulate it. And I will be changing the pointer, I will be changing that pointer, that one that's right in there, 
as opposed to some other pointer or some copy of the pointer. So that's what's happening here. So this is the insert code, and again, it's a private thing, so that's why it's called p-insert. And, um, and the first thing that it does is it calls find. And that seems kind of weird because the key that you're giving is the thing that you're trying to insert into the dictionary. So why, I mean, it's not going to find it. So why call find? But the point is, oh, let, yeah, I've got to give you an example. Here's the example. Insert uh, 8. And the 8th most popular cat name in Japan is May. May? I don't even know if that has a translation, does it? Something? Anyway, I don't know. Um, so I want to insert this 8a into this tree. Uh, I follow finds operations, because that's the first thing that gets called. And find says... Um, I do what I do. I'm going to try to find it. I compare 8 against 10, and 8 is smaller, so I go this way. I compare 8 against 5, and 8 is larger, so I go this way. I compare 8 against 9, and 8 is smaller, so I go this way. And I compare 8 against 7, and 8 is larger, and so I go this way. And when that happens, what does find do? It hits a null pointer, and it returns it but it returns a reference to the null pointer. And so I get a reference to that pointer. So find this call right here returns a reference to this Pointer. It always returns null, but it's returning a reference to null. So the return value is it returns null, unless if it's not null, then there's a problem because then you're trying to insert a key that's already in the dictionary. So if it's not null, it basically says duplicate and it sort of waves its hands and tells you about it. But if it works correctly, then what it should really do is find nothing. It should find null. And that null, though, is exactly in the position where we should be inserting this new, new uh, node, the new, new key value pair. And that's what happens, is that when we find out that it's a, a null, then we set target, which is this thing right here, this... This is the reference parameter that we're using to access that particular pointer within the structure. We set that pointer to be a new node, which contains uh, the, key the key value pair that we've inserted, 8 and a. Does this make sense? A question about this? Because I have a question for you. If you're all good, if you're all good, then I got a question. Why do I pass in the root as a reference parameter? This is insert. Insert. What does it do? It takes a new thing, compares it to the root value, puts it in the left subtree if it's smaller, puts it in the right subtree if it's larger. It doesn't change the root. It just goes and puts stuff in. Why do I need to pass this root as a reference parameter? I beg your pardon? Oh, this is like a high-level answer to my question. That's an excellent thing. So the high-level answer is that there's no other way to get access to the tree other than passing in the root. So we but my point is not so much that we're passing in the root, but why am I passing it into the reference parameter? I could pass it in as just a node point. Who's going to change it? I mean, why would you want to do that? I mean, it's always going to be inserted. The new node is always going to be inserted as a new leaf, right? That's the way this works in the binary search tree. You go down to the bottom, 
plunk the thing in there and that's where it lives. Then this is what you, you use find to do. Yeah. Well, there is some technical reason why I'm doing it. The technical reason is that I, I really do want to um, be able to pass it into my find function as a reference to a root pointer. So, you know, the type of this uh, argument should be the type of argument that I'm expecting in my in my pfind code. So that, that's a technical answer to why I did it. But why did I do it? I mean, and I know that when I get in there, everything's recursive and yada, 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 yada. It's all got to... So, I, I mean, I understand the sort of technical, legalistic reason why I need to make it be a reference to a node pointer. But why would I want it to be a reference to a node pointer besides the fact that this is so just cool? So cool to do this. Why would I want to do that? What else could I have done? I mean, what? Yeah. That's right. So if the tree, the only reason that this is going to be a, an issue, the only reason that this is um, uh, a mutable, it's a, ch a changeable, uh, a modifiable parameter, it's a reference parameter so that we can modify it, is when uh, root is null. When I pass in an empty tree as the tree that I want to insert into, what changes? Well, the root node changes because there's nothing in the tree up until that point. It's null. And then you insert something and it becomes the root. It becomes the first root in the tree. And that's why. So this gets triggered. So the tree is modified. What did I say? Something. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the root is modified. Modified when you insert. Uh, in an empty tree. So it needs to be modifiable because I'm not returning a value. I'm just basically, yeah. Um, You want you want to know whether I should? Well, let me just think of how I actually do this. Uh, maybe, but it'd be like what you've seen before. Yeah, because I, I I definitely remember asking questions that involved reference parameters, and it was, but it was more obvious. I mean, this by the way, this is like um, this is like uh, high school reference parameters. Okay, this is the level we're at. We're at high school level reference parameters. The, the remove code, that's the university level reference parameters. Thing. So we're not quite at university. We're at high school level reference parameter uh, stuff. Actually, maybe we're at, maybe we're at university level re reference parameter stuff, and the next thing is like PhD or something crazy like that level. That's what we're getting to. Yep. So why aren't you doing No, 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 you're checking if that's the beauty of reference parameters. If I give you a reference parameter, which is a pointer to a node, and I ask you, is that reference parameter null? It is not checking whether the reference is null, it's checking whether the thing that's referenced is null. It is not a pointer to a pointer. It is a reference to a pointer. That's a difference. And it's a subtle difference. It's a little bit like, um, it's a little bit more restrictive than a pointer to a pointer. Uh, when you put it on the, when you try to access it, like it's on the right-hand side of some equation, 
it converts it into the value that's being referenced, the value that's referenced, the thing that it's looking at. So it used to be in the old days when C++ was just a macro package sitting on top of C. I'm just checking to see if I can tell you the story. Um, it's on, it's, it, it, it was the case that everything was uh, translated, all these reference parameters were translated into pointers to pointers or pointers to whatever. They were translated into pointers. And then there was, this was basically just like a syntactic sugar to prevent you from having to write stars in front of everything in your, that you would normally have to write in C, in your regular C code. You'd have to write star, star, P. Supposed to just star. Anyway, now things are much better, yes. Why, why do you need the uh, by reference? Oh, why is this? Very good. Why is this here? Yeah, this is a great question. What if I took that away? I take away the right. It's a node pointer. It's a node star target. And it says, whatever gives, P find gives me, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a node star, and that's all that I need. Because then I have the pointer, and then I set that pointer to be a new node, and there I'm off to the races. Something a little suspicious in that last step, right? I mean, you got this pointer called target. Oh, maybe you know the answer. What's the answer? That's exactly correct. The problem is if I declare it to be a node pointer, then all it is is a node pointer. It's not the particular node pointer that pfind returned to me. It's no longer a reference to the particular pointer in the structure. It's just a pointer. And what happens is that it's exactly what you said. When it returns the reference to a pointer and it sees it's going to be assigning it to a pointer, it just copies the pointer. That's the thing that it should do. But as I declare it as a reference to a pointer, then it knows that what I want is actually the reference to the pointer. I want that to be the thing that's in target. And then I can use this statement here, this update statement, target equals new, to affect the actual pointer that's within the structure. Otherwise, what would happen is I would just create a copy of whatever the, the, the new it would just tell me what the pointer is, and I would assign it to target. And then when the when the code ended, target is a local variable. It just gets thrown away from the call stack, and nothing happens to my structure. So, but an excellent, excellent question. I should really, I should learn how to teach. Is what I should do. It's be much better. But um, but anyway, that's the key. It's the key. We need that to be a reference to the pointer. Otherwise, we can't grab a hold of the right point. I know there's a midterm coming up. Yeah. I've actually finished writing the midterm, so that's good news. Um, any other questions about this particular use of these reference parameters? The reason that I'm showing you this I mean, it's kind of cool, and it's kind of a, an idiosyncrasy to C and C++ a bit. But the other, the real reason that I'm doing it in a class like this on data structures and algorithms is to highlight the fact that for some structures, like trees, linked lists, that are pointer-based, the pointers that are in those structures, those there's only one copy of an important pointer. There's only one link in this tree that connects the new node to the old tree. And somehow reference parameters highlight the fact that it's only this one pointer that needs to be updated. That only that one parameter needs to be set. So I'm not claiming necessarily that this code is elegant in any way, but it is concise. And once you understand reference parameters, 
it tells you information about the structure. It tells you this is a structure that I can manipulate by just modifying one pointer. That's all that I have to do in order to get the new thing in there. That's it. I don't have to race around and change a bunch of things, just one. Okay, um, great. So let's do some insertions. So this will address your question eventually about average depth. So suppose that I was inserting a bunch of stuff into an empty BST. Suppose that I inserted these uh, key value pairs into this empty BST. Uh, I would like you to tell me what is the total running time? Oh, by the way, do you know how long it takes for insert to run? How much time does it take? Theta n. It's, it's basically the running time of find. That's what's doing all the work. And we know what the running time of find is. So, okay. so we, got, we got it that the, the worst case, it's linear. It's order n time. But in, in general, we can think of it as being the depth of the key is how much work you have to do if you're looking for something, finding something that's in the tree. Of course, if you're inserting stuff, you'll never find it. It's always at the bottom of the tree. So, so another way to say that is that maybe with insert, you can think of it as being proportional to the height of the tree. When I insert into the tree, in the worst case, the running time will be order height. Uh, maybe I'll write run time is something like theta of the height of the tree. Which, of course, as you know, could be theta n. All right, so now, uh, here's the deal. Uh, which one? The theta n? Oh. oh, because I'm telling you a story. What story am I telling you? And I don't think it's so fast, necessarily. And you're right, I don't think it's so slow, either. I mean, theta height is not so bad if the height is shallow. Theta n is kind of bad, because it's the same as a linear list. Like, I can do this with a linked list, not with a tree. So it's sort of saying, how are we going through all this work in order to get just theta of n performance. But that needs to be expressed as a big omega. I have to tell you that the running time is some constant, greater than some constant times n. Does that answer your question? Yeah. No, no, no. No, now you're talking best case versus worst case. So I, I, that's, uh, I'm always talking about worst case running time, unless, unless, you know, otherwise forced, I will be talking about worst case, because that's the way I am. But in the worst case, there's a well-defined function, and then you can talk about that well-defined function as having upper bounds and lower bounds. For many of those functions, those bounds are tight, because we understand them pretty well. We understand the worst case running time pretty well. For some, we don't. For some, there are cases where you analyze an algorithm and you don't know. You only can put bounds on. You can only say it's big O of n squared and it's big omega of n. But for most of the things we talk about, we can get tight bounds. Yeah? Um, I think, uh, I was thinking, so what if, so you're saying runtime is big of I was thinking way the tree is not Yeah. Same question. You're talking about best case. I'm talking about as the parameter that I tell you is height. What's the worst case running time as a function of height? But you can say for sure. I mean, it could be that the tree is really you know sort of right at the top and it takes only order one time. But then you should be talking about sort of like. No, this is an order that's depending on, it's a worst case running time based on how deep I have to go in the tree to insert the item. And you could talk about a bounds. But if I tell you that the parameter is height, and worst case for height is that, theta height. Okay, great, we're inserting stuff. It's easy. 
Easy, because they know how to do insertion. I insert them in the order one, two, three, four, five, six, right? It looks something like this. One, and then two, and then three, and then four, et cetera, down to seven. Suppose I did this n times. Suppose instead of seven cats, there were n cats. What is the total running time to perform all of these insertions on this tree? Hold on. This is an important thing. So everybody that's sort of sleeping right now should wake up and the question was, if I insert in this particular fashion, one, two, three, all the way up to n, what is the total running time of that process? And I will give you 42 seconds to do that. While you're doing that. Okay, let's vote. Uh, we have a bunch of possibilities. How many people think that the total running time of the process is theta of n? How many people think the total running time is theta of n log n? How many people think the total running time is theta of n squared? How many people think the total running time is theta of n cubed? If theta of n squared wins, and you are correct, it's theta of n squared. Should, at this point, this should be something that you can do like in about 10 seconds. Uh, if you know that it's the sum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7, because that's the cost of the insertion for each of the elements. Inserting 1 costs you 1. Inserting 2 costs you 2. Inserting the third one costs you 3. The sum is n squared. That's n times n plus 1 over 2. Right? Okay, great. So this is theta of n squared, yay. What is it if I do it in reverse order? This is a ridiculous question. No one would ever ask that. I start at n and I go all the way down to 1. And what is the total amount of time that I would do? Also n squared. It's exactly the same thing, but it's symmetric. It's because I'm always inserting in the left. The left subtree is growing by 1 each time. And I have to take an extra step in order to get down to the leftmost leaf. What if I insert in this funny, strange order? Let's do it together. Here we go. Insert 4, and then we insert 2, and then where does the 6 go? Where does the 1 go? Left 1. Where does the 3 go? Right up to where does the five go? Mm. Where does the seven go? If I look at this order, four, two, six, one, three, five, seven, you've seen this order before with respect to this tree. What is that order called? Level order. That's right. So this is a well, this is a level order insertion. I just made that up. Uh, anyway, it's, it's so level order is um, producing this particular tree, and the question is again, if I do uh, insertion of n elements in level order. I have to be clever to figure this out. But anyway, I do it somehow, magically. It's in level order, I insert the things. What is the total running time for level order insertion of n elements into a tree? You can start by telling me, you don't have to tell me 
uh, exactly what it is. You could start by telling me what's an upper bound, like big O of what? What is big O of? Big O of something. Or you could tell me it's a lower bound, like you tell me it's big omega of something. You don't have to tell me the whole story immediately. You can just tell me one of the pieces. It's big O of N. An upper bound? I, you're saying it, no, you mean a lower bound, right? It's you, you want to say that the lower bound means it's the lower bound is down here and it's telling you the thing is bigger. Yeah, okay. So big omega. It's big omega then. Excellent. It is big omega then. You are correct. What is this tree that we're producing though? What does this look like to you? I mean, what's its name? We know it's uh, some type of a binary tree. What type of a binary tree is it? If I insert in level order. Complete, that's the right word. It's a complete binary tree. Complete binary tree. Okay, that's great. So if I have a complete binary tree with n nodes in it, what's its height? In a complete binary tree with n nodes, what's the height of a complete binary tree with n nodes? Yeah, log n. I'm, I'm just I'm worried because there's not enough log n's coming out. I mean, everybody should be saying log n, log, log n, log n. And looking at me as if I'm an idiot for asking, because it's a tree. It's complete, therefore it's a subtree of a perfect tree, and that perfect tree has height and most log n, and I can tell you the complete tree has height and most log n, floor of log n. So log n is the height. Now do you want to revise your statement about how much the total work is to build this thing? So the statement was that it's also n squared. But how much work do I have to do to insert any particular node into this tree? How much work have I had to do as a function of n? What's the maximum amount of work that I have to do to insert one node into the tree? The height of the tree, log n. So the maximum amount of work per node is log n, which tells you right away that whatever this total is, it's got to be big O of n log n got to be less than n times log n because there are n things that are inserted and each one of them takes no more than log n time. So it's big O of n log n. Is it big omega of n log n? It might be small. It's a lot of nodes that are up at the top. They're really quick to insert. Do you remember us talking about this before? We had this summation where we had a lot of terms in the summation that were really small. We didn't have to worry about them. But then we got to a point where it was like, you remember this? You don't remember this? Remember calculating log of n factorial? Getting big O and big omega notation on that? What did we do there? We said, we basically said that half of the things that we were calculating in the log of n factorial were big. How many nodes in this tree are down at the depth of about log n? Plus or minus one. Well, minus one. How many are down there at the leaf level in this complete tree? How many leaves are there? About half. You know, I keep drawing these trees like they're triangles. They are not like triangles. They are like this hyperbolic thing that goes like this. It's growing by a factor of two at each level. So there's not straight lines on the sides. They go out like this. And so you know the number of nodes that are at the bottom, the number is going to be basically half of the nodes in the tree are down there at the leaf level. So what I know is that the number of insertions, and the, number, the, the amount of time that I spent to do the insertions for those leaf nodes, the ones that are at the bottom, there's about half of them, the amount of work that I had to do was about log n. 
So I've got about n over 2 log n. So it's going to be something that's greater than some constant times n log n as well. So the running time is, for this guy, the running time is theta of n log n. How could it possibly be 252? Okay. Uh, anyway, you have a midterm uh, tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow in a different place. This strange other place.